Welcome to NerdStalker. I am Adolfo Ferranda at NerdStalker on Twitter with my co-host. Greg Valoria, AK Social Greg on Twitter. Hey man, what's going on? What's hey. what's what's new in the tech this week, man? Nothing. Nothing happened. Same as last week. I'll make sure that's watching story. everyone and goodbye. No. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, what, let's just get into this. I appreciate uh, all your tweets this week, but uh, what's this first trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy? I mean, there's an animated series for this? Hey, yeah. So as you all know, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy happens to be, uh, I believe it's uh, Marvel's, one of Marvel's biggest successes in terms of even the comic, you know, which is really strange because it's a bunch of these sort of... Uh, you know, funny aliens, and it turned out to be a huge success that the, I didn't think everyone sort of like expected it to be. And then, and then the movie comes out, right? It right, becomes right. A, a gigantic success that uh, I really enjoyed too, as someone who went and saw it with my kid too. Um, really nice. fantastic. So, anyways, now nearly two years after that whole thing, uh, you've been people have been dying to see them back in action. And thanks to Boy Genius Report telling us that uh, you might want to keep an eye on Disney XD this summer, this September, when the Guardians of the Galaxy animated series debuts. Nice. Uh, Mar Marvel says the short clips from the show introducing the main character will air on Disney XD every Saturday night in August, leading up to a sneak preview of the first episode on Saturday, September 5th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, then on the following Saturday, uh, there'll be a one-hour premiere event uh, will begin. So, Guardians of the Galaxy will join the Avengers Assemble, Hulk, Agents of Smash, and uh, Ultimate Spider-Man on Disney XD Marvel Universe block. Uh, so, go check it out. It's on YouTube. Do a little Google search for Marvel's Guardian of the Galaxy first promo, and uh, you will see the animated trailer. It looks really cool. Nice. Good job. Yeah, that sounds pretty exciting, though. I gotta gotta check that one out. Yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun for grown-ups and for kids. So how about, uh, Greg, how about you? Okay to shoot down? Drones? <laughs> well, there's a lot of stories about drones oh, recently. Wackos of shooting down drones. Yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah, and so uh, thanks to Gizmodo for this one, uh, Brian Lufkin. Uh, is it okay to shoot down your neighbor's drone? Well, you know, if, the, if, if, if it's catching you and your uh, girlfriend or your uh, significant other having sex, can you shoot it down? No. Wow. That's what they said. So basically, it's it's a legal full fledged aircraft. They say so. Basically, uh, uh, you know, you will be fined or if you imprisoned for no more than twenty years for shooting down a drone. As that apparently, is weird. Wow. Well, you know, I was I'm curious if that's a consumer yeah. or, or or if that's like a like a corporate drone. You know what I mean? Like, uh, is well, there? A there's they're saying yeah no they're saying that that it's it's a flying a robot essentially in a flying aircraft and you can't legally you can't f shoot down anything and, and it's practicality they're saying is that like if something's in the air shooting it down would actually require to go down and that could cause a more of a safety hazard than hmm. just hmm. leaving it I up there that. I, that's the rationale at the um, same but, time though i mean and this is just me yeah i yeah. think is it, isn't it strange that uh, no one's really brought up the question, or perhaps they have and I just haven't heard about it, is how much airspace are we entitled to at our homes? Let's say we have a three, two, three-story home. Are we entitled to three, two stories worth of airspace in our backyards, you know? Or is yeah. that, are they on our private property at that point? It, it just gets really murky. Oh, you don't know. And, and, and the cutting edge is that if it's causing you harm, then you have every right to you know, do something about it. So like if it's something close, close to your eye, let's say it's, you know, it's like, you know, it's like two inches from your face and, and mm. like you, you get, you, you feel like it's not only invading your privacy, but you feel your, your life is at harm because of the blades or whatever, then mm -hmm. you can do something about it. But apparently mm. you can't at this point cannot do that. Now I'm sure the FAA is trying to figure this whole drone thing out and you know we got to get one of those guys who i interviewed last year on drones to kind of chime in on what's going on because you know you know it's a big hobby thing but you mm -hmm. know there's a lot of privacy issues around that still and and actually uh you know remember i think last week when we had a couple of fires here uh in northern california that yeah. it stopped some of the aircraft from actually coming in and and dropping retardant on on the fire mm -hmm. you know and i and i think i thought yeah, that go was, ahead. The was that the obstruction story thing? Yeah, that was the obstruction story. And um, then and then um 
and then what happened is a bunch of you know tv you know telecast said hey you know don't fly your 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 drone there it was like four drones in here trying to get an idea on you know where this where this fire was going and you know it was a news generating story but at the same time it was it was unsafe for the uh or they felt it was unsafe for the actual frame retardant aircrafts to actually get in the air with, with mm. those drones in the air so mm. but you know I, then there was that other tweet i saw this week where where what the u.s navy has created a laser that could shoot down drones <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> wow. That was another one. I was like, what? That's yeah, right, anti-drone right. laser, you know? Well, they're um, also asking for, and I believe they being uh, the government or is asking, and I think some companies, for, for all drones to have some sort of switch to be able to disabled in an emergency. Yeah. I think this goes back to your fire uh Issue yeah, or whatever too. You know, I mean, it's just kind of like that kill switch on your on your your phones now, right? At mm. least in California, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that... that you know, if you if you could, if if someone could have an override switch, it would be the police or you know uh, emergency personnel. Mm -hmm. That makes some sense to me. I like There's that. There's a uh, multi-millionaire high stakes cash game um, poker player named uh, Dan Blazerian or Bilzerian, mm. and he uh, he's he, he's really his Instagrams are totally insane. And one of them, one of the things that he's doing now is he he's really known for having all these guns and stuff. He used to be this like um, marine or something like that. Oh right? yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, and he's got all these crazy machine guns and all this stuff. And what he's doing now is, you know how uh, people go skeet shooting, right? With like oh, yeah. guns and things like that. Yeah. You now he's, yeah. he's yeah. going, he's having his people he hire with drones out there, and he'll just yeah. shoot these drones with machine guns and stuff, or shotguns oh, and cool. rifles. Oh yeah, so that's right. It's for drones. Cool. So they're like he's blowing away these drones. It's crazy. Oh man, that is crazy. Yeah, he'll actually pay you for bring your drone in so he could shoot it with something. I love it. I love it. Well, anyway, you know, I, I think, you know, it, it, the the story hasn't uh, settled yet on drones. So it's it's just interesting that I, I was catching that Gizmodo thing. So, but anyway, hey, well, what's this next story about a patent troll is killing the networked sex toy industry? What's going on there? Yeah, so thanks to uh, Mark Fronfelder, Fronfelder of Boing Boing for this. Yes, thanks to uh, a patent troll, dildos with no won't be able won't be allowed to have sex with flashlights anna lee news it's have gizmodo delivers the bad news so part of the i guess the patent is uh if you have a sex toy that can be remotely controlled using existing computer networks that's how stupidly broad this thing is or controlled by a video on your computer what? then it's supposedly covered by this foolish foolish patent uh and that's why patent trolling company tzu recently bought it and promptly tried to sue a bunch of sex toy startups for infringement. So oh, the reason no. I brought up this story is just obviously the the craziness of of patents being illustrated here again, and the misuse of them, and the need for some sort of either legislation or delegislation or something, something, um, uh, something to be done about these things, uh, and for this animated GIF as well. That is oh, uh, is, is fantastic here. Well, you know, our, our friends at Vibe, uh, Vibes, I, I, they're not going to like that, that uh, the the smart vibrator. Remember, I forget. Yeah, uh, yeah from SF New Tech, we, we, had, uh, we had the Vibes uh, vibrator there. That was pretty cool, actually. Awesome. Oh, my God. That's crazy. All right, my man. So um, Google's autonomous car. What's up with oh. that? Yeah, there's been a couple of injuries actually uh, recently, and it's actually linked to uh, drivers who uh, were distracted. <laughs> it wasn't the actual, you know, I think the, the original thing on autonomous vehicles was that they really felt that the autonomous vehicles were going to cause a lot of accidents, hmm. right? Hmm. And it turns out, yeah, they're causing accidents, but it's the other drivers who are distracted causing the right. accidents to Google vehicles. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, thanks to, uh, Let's see, uh, Charlie Osborne uh, from ZDNet for breaking this story that I caught that, uh, you know, this week or the, uh, during uh, July 1st, as, um, as uh, kind of test drivers were cruising towards the Google's Mountain View headquarter campus, you know, the light was green, and, but the travel bottleneck causing three cars, including the Google autonomous vehicle, kind of break to a halt suddenly. But the next car in line right behind him didn't plowed into him at 17 miles an hour apparently and caused a whiplash so was this the actual first mm -hmm. noted injury but it was it was to the test driver unfortunately of the autonomous vehicle wow um, yeah and uh, you know it kind of you know it, it kind of 
begs a question in my mind is that as you bring autonomous vehicles on, there's this crossover point, which we're seeing, right? We're going to have some autonomous vehicles, but some manned vehicles still. So how mm-hmm. does that all, I mean, this, this is an example of how this is all kind of, kind of play out eventually, right? As this thing yeah. kind of cuts over, right? I mean, until you get, I would say, a number of autonomous vehicles on the road where you could actually moderate the traffic enough, you know, this is going to be a probably a common occurrence, I would think, right? Right, right. One of the really extreme and interesting examples is the implementation of uh, artificial intelligence in these things, right? And uh, being the concern that this is, um, someone's going to have to pre-program the logic for this thing to decide if um, there's a child running in front of your car, do I swerve, and you can't stop, do I swerve and kill the people on the sidewalk, the mother on the sidewalk, with the other kids, Ooh. or do I take out the kids? So these are like very real type Ooh. of scenarios that will need to be pre-programmed and pre-decided somehow into it. So I can understand this sort of hybrid approach initially with like the humans versus purely yeah. AI, right? Or something sure. like that, to some yeah, extent. Yeah, that, that AI approach, I, I have seriously doubt with what's going on. I mean, we're going to have another story that talks about AI and and and, and, t- and messaging, but I, I was like, I was going like, wow, yeah. I mean, total control. Uh, I, I like the hybrid approach, as you said. I, th- I think that's still going to be yeah, a human override needs to happen in, in all cases, I think. Yeah, so, a lot of things to discuss and still think out thoroughly for this type of... Yeah. So no, sure. totally, totally. Well, yeah, but I thought that was kind of an interesting story I saw a break this week. But anyway, let's go into your next one. Flickr bring back Pro? What do you mean bring back Pro? Right, right. So apparently there's been like a big demand and, and for for Flickr to bring back the Pro, especially from their uh, photographers on their community. I too was, you know, I'm a, I'm a Flickr Pro member previously mm. and I was paying, I think it was $99 a year or something yeah, like that. For, it was pretty uh, cheap. I mean, reasonable for, for some unlimited amount or a few terabytes yeah. of space. And this was prior to when uh, suddenly Dropbox and Google and everyone started giving out giant space. And then in turn, you know, Flickr went free and yeah. gave you, I believe it was, I can't remember, a couple terabytes of space too. Enough for yeah. plenty for me, but I, I never really understood or what happened to my pro membership uh, too. And I didn't yeah. realize what they were doing was placing, inserting uh, ads on when someone would look at an image, uh, the somewhere on the image itself, right in their, in their little area. So right. the pro membership will now do away with those ads, and apparently will give you increased and better analytics. And this is all stuff that's really uh, important to you know photographers and, mm-hmm. and people who actually care. Me, I'm just sharing some pictures with my mom or something of my kid, you know. So it's not exactly. Uh, a do or die thing for me. But I think for those of you who are more, you know, there's a lot of serious photographers out there, serious amateur photographers. Unreal. Flickr, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And, uh, and, and, and also this in- improved sharing experience apparently too to, to sort of follow, follow through on, on that type of uh, information, which is uh, particularly in, uh, of value to some people. Also, they're doing this tie-in with Adobe, with Creative Cloud, which I think is the cancer mm. of, uh, of the tech right now, but uh, I digress. Cloud, yeah. So anyways, go check it out. Uh, Flickr Pro is available starting today for six bucks a month, uh, if paid monthly, or $50 a year. That's actually quite a nice value. Um, existing Pro members will be automatically upgraded to the new plan and will be able to keep their existing pricing and features. So there oh, you go. Amazing, amazing. Oh, so wow. IBM, what's going on with them? Well, you know, IBM Watson, I mean, a.k.a. Hal, <laughs> can analyze the tone of a message, he said. So thanks, and Dean Takahashi of VentureBeat for this one. Um, so apparently, you know, they got this Hal supercomputer, right, doing yeah. some pretty crazy things out there, right? Yeah. So so what they, what they did now is that it actually could uh, analyze emotions in in your text and in your email. So, you know, that is the one of the issues with email when we read it, you know, even human beings can't really see the context of the motions of the email. Well, well, apparently IBM Watson can. So mm-hmm. it, it analyzed, um, you know, this, this pretty long message and it, it break, broke it into like terms like uh, agreeableness, conscientiousness, a lot of, you know, adjectives, you know, openness, um, cheerfulness, negative, anger, 
<laughs> emotional tone. I, 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 I don't. I, I just thought it was kind of interesting that actually someone is trying to analyze an email or or text messages now because it's going to go it, and, and it could tell you if the person's mad or not. So I, I, I don't know where this is yeah. going, but um, AI. Hello, it, yeah, it all comes uh, back to I, this crazy. Yeah, I mean, this is the AI piece I was uh, referring to earlier with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the autonomous vehicle thing that we, right. we just kind of reviewed. Uh, uh, I think this is going to be an increasing theme, you know, and I think uh, Watson is on the forefront of of a lot of this. Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, how, how uh, you know, 2015 how comes to comes to life. <laughs> yeah, there was a story too um, uh, today or yesterday that I that I tweeted out was uh, I can't remember regarding a robot or something that actually passed the self awareness test. Oh, so this has yeah. apparently never happened before. And yeah, 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 passed the test. So a lot of people are um, bringing up some serious uh, proposals in order to, you know, uh, actually count a robot w who's passed such a test as an actual other mm -hmm. species, actual yeah, living, yeah, actual yeah. living rights, and this. And yeah, that. that's crazy. That's totally crazy. Here we go. <laughs> I, I tell you. I tell you. Well, let's get out of this thing and let's go into the speed round. <laughs> speed so what's, this, what's, what's your first one there? Ah, yes. So uh, I am a proud owner of a Nest, what used to be a Nest thermostat, right? And um, which was owned by Nest, which was recently acquired by Google. Well, you can no longer purchase Google's popular smart thermostat on Apple's online store. The Nest thermostat was being sold at Apple stores and That's hilarious. Store for quite some time. Uh, they've managed to come around and start pulling these things rightly so, I guess, because um, it's a Google product. It's a fantastic product. And not only that, um, Apple's going to be coming out, well, not Apple, but other partners are going to be coming out with their home kit solutions, right, which will be competitors with all the smart stuff, uh, leveraging the Apple's home kit platform for all kinds cool. of smart, smart home devices. I'm really excited to see that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, nice. so they've replaced that device with the Ecobee 3 in, at their stores, which is going for 249 bucks. We're going to see a lot more HomeKit enabled stuff, I think, uh, next year. Oh, uh, the first tidal wave, or perhaps later this year, tidal wave of that type of stuff uh, rapidly uh, is released. So Internet yeah. of Things, buddy. Internet That's right. Of things. <laughs> All right. All right. Here's my story. White House announces Connect Home Initiative to bring internet to low-income homes. It's basically trying to challenge the digital divide in, of the internet there. So thanks to Adam Westlake of Thash Slash Gear for this. The Obama administration has announced that uh, program that uh, aims to increase the number of low-income households who have access to high-speed internet. And, and that's it's called Connect Home. And uh, You'll see people like Google and Cox and Sprint and CenturyLink bring broadband service to, you know, to 275,000 families in 27 cities. They said so. Yeah, basically, yeah, any in, any in, uh, household income that has less than $25,000 will will uh, be able to apply for this program. So it's it's really cool, and you know they'll they'll be going to uh, cities that already have Google Fiber too. So that that'll just be awesome, and you know if. So it'll basically offer it to about oh, about ten dollars a month in some of these Google Fiber cities. So uh, I mean, uh, thanks to the Obama administration for that, and um, let's see how that gets more of the kids and people with low incomes into the uh, internet world mm -hmm. or the fast lane. So anyway, all right, speed round. Yes. So uh, the Amazon Prime Day fail. So uh, as you all know, uh, Amazon Prime members and all of us, there was a big, much hyped, even by us, when we fell for this, uh, Amazon Prime Day sale, where they were going to claim all kinds of major awesome deals on some great devices. As you see here, uh, it turned out to be quite a meme for people's uh, disappointment when it turned out to be not so fantastic of a sale. Uh, here we see a green toy, and we see really great tweets here, which on price, uh, Prime was eleven ninety nine with the deal. You get it for seven bucks. It's a rubber, looks like a rubber duck in a green boat. And um, there were some really hilarious memes out there. Nice. Uh, you can see a banana slicer <laughs> that was there on That's sale crazy. there. And um, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's a lot of this, a lot of no deals happening, a lot of deals being over type of situations. Oh, uh, man. This guy says, oh, goody, the unrated edition of Fifty Shades of Grey is 60% off in the toys and games section. Okay. Uh, 
here you have someone you see you can save well, what is that a dollar off a deal of the day there you go <laughs> on prime day uh, this was funny. a great one uh, prime day is like when grandma says help yourself to the candy jar but it has nothing but raisins and sugar-free saltwater taffy that's hilarious um, so a lot of really funny stuff. There's a big 55-gallon uh, barrel of lube there. And uh, what else here? This one was pretty good, too. A Sony PlayStation 4 where you save uh, 4 cents. There's one for 400 bucks. Your price with the sales, $399.95. Just for being a Amazon Prime member. But, you know, there are benefits of being a Prime member. So, so I think, you know, I wanted you know. to see what their Prime membership rates, how it went up that for just for that day. I mean, bit. You know, I wonder how that went, but anyway, anyway, speed All round. Right. Well, anyway, you know, Honda, Honda gets into the Android game. Isn't that cool? So, uh, thanks to uh, Recode, yeah. yeah, Ina Freed, you know, she's really has some very good articles, but, um, you know, uh, first Honda model, the Accord now it includes Google's Android Auto and Apple's CarPlay. Basically, but basically, what's big here is that. They're going away from uh, this OEM architecture into an actual um, Droid and uh, uh, Apple uh, architecture. So basically, it's one of the first. Was what's kind of neat about this? The auto industry has been famous about actually putting in uh, their own OEM kind of experiences, and they quite suck. What what I've heard from most people. Mm. You know? So the Honda model to Accord to have a, actually a Google Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is going to be actually amazing as their main uh, entertainment and navigation system. So I thought that was kind of cool. So check out that that uh, that article on Recode. And uh, anyway, speed round, speed round. Yeah. So the next story was the Uber Cap could be revived. Uh, I don't know if many of you heard. I think many of you have that uh, recently Uber and New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio were at war and uh, everyone thought Mayor de Blasio was going to put caps on Uber uh, to the uh, to because there's just so many cars out there competing with taxis etc sure. etc and uh, Mayor de, Bl de Blasio backed down which is uh, oh. quite surprising wow. there yeah because uh, his uh, people his allies actually that the co-mayor allies which he's typically worked with together in the past have uh, actually stopped worked against him in this one and they came to loggerheads and uh tabled essentially this cap proposal by de blasio so huh. uh yeah very Whoa. interesting stuff but Whoa. de blasio is saying that it's back on the table again potentially if uh in the future i think he's trying to save face at this point because it was a major uh, black eye to him you know in, in big cities like ours uh, san francisco new york you know i think it's uh, it's becoming more of a you know a must now. Everyone kind of tells me, "Oh, want to just Uber it over there?" You know, you yeah. know. Five years ago, I never heard anyone say that. You know, let's just take a taxi. But like, you know, this is this is a uh, a, a, a a groundswell of of activity that's just never going to be stopped at this point. I don't think so. Right. Anyway, all right. Let's get into your. Uh, Instant pot smart? What, what the tip heck down, is that? I mean, are you talking down. about marijuana? What tip, tip down, tip down. down. So, you know, marijuana? so, you know, uh, being a, the suburbanite homeowner now that I am, uh, I have fallen in love with a lot of uh, cooking tech and home tech, as a lot of you guys know. And I've just f discovered pressure cooking, right? So when you think of oh, pressure yeah, cooking, pressure you things. think of this old things that you put on your stove and you time and there's all these... Yeah fears of exploding spaghetti on your roof and all this stuff. Oh, yeah, right? of course. Uh, the technology has vastly improved since those days. And vastly. I suggest a lot of you guys um, uh, check it out because there is a fantastic product that touches upon that that ironically I got on Amazon fail prime sale day. <laughs> the Instant Pot. Uh, go to instantpot.com. It's fantastic. They got a new version called the Instant Pot Smart, which is uh, works Bluetooth with your phone, has a lot of pre-programmed uh, recipes and things like that. But it's super effective, and it's a fantastic thing. Nice. Just throw all the stuff in, your meat, your veggies, whatever, seal it up, you know, your broth, whatever. You can make all kinds of fascinating things, walk away. There's none of this exploding stuff anymore. Everything's, like, super safe, and love it. uh, it's really wonderful. So check it out, Instant Pot. I couldn't uh, recommend it more. It's I smart. Bl it's Bluetooth-enabled. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, wow. right. You can actually uh, control with your smartphone. Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Wow, i got to get a rice cooker that's Bluetooth-enabled next. Yeah, that, hey, uh, this thing does that too. 
I see, love it's a it. rice. It's actually a multi-purpose device. I should mention too. It's a rice cooker. Oh, okay. It's a slow yeah. cooker, like your typical crock pot, crock as well pot. as a pressure cooker, yeah. and more. Oh man, yeah, I'm drooling now. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, tip time, tip time. Anyway, we got this uh, this this week or this last week. We interviewed uh, uh, a guy who was a radio radio personality turned entrepreneur with Ringer. So we're actually right. doing this podcast with Ringer, and uh, you guys could check it out on uh, Podomatic and uh, iTunes Store our our podcast and see what the sound quality is. So normally what we do is we just strip it off of our YouTube and then r run it right up to the, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the iTunes store. But here, I'm going to try actually putting on Podomatic this, this podcast and you guys could tell me how you like it, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, he really wants to, uh, increase the, 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 the quality fidelity of mobile to mobile podcasting. So wow. actually had Alpha and mm -hmm. I could do this on his way to work uh, while I'm walking to Japan town or something like that. We should probably try that, you know, actually do one of our podcasts while we're actually just talking about something, you know, so yeah, yeah man, check it out. If I didn't have such a horrible data plan. Then well, be all with you. when I go, when I go T-Mobile or, or cricket or something, I'm with you. Okay, I understand that. So no, anyway, Ringer. check out ringer.us. Uh, Thanks, man. The one with the orange, like there's two of them apparently right now. So one with the orange logo, download it now, okay? All anyway. right. So what do we got? Founder Space, what's happening? Oh, Founder Space. Let me uh, unshare because I'm, I'm terrible at this. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Founder Space, uh, there's a couple of events coming up. And, uh, you know, you want to catch it, go to our uh, – Go to go to our account. You get a twenty five percent nerd stalker discount uh, for actually going on to that stuff. And uh, you know, there's there's a couple of cool cool things coming up in the uh, in in well in August now. Um, you have uh, Founder Space Summer of Love Party on August thirteenth at eight p.m. And uh, you'll be able to meet startups, VCs, and angels. Usually, it's a pretty big event. Uh, they'll they usually get about four hundred to five hundred people, so you'll like that. And then on August 27th, uh, the, the graduating class of Pitch Day and Mixer, you'll see starting at 3 p.m. It's a little bit early oh, for a lot cool. of you, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a mentor down there. So uh, catch Pitch Day. You'll see about, you know, you'll see all the, 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 the accelerator program startups pitch uh, to VCs and angels that day. And it's usually pretty interesting, actually, some of the things you get. So anyway, cool. catch it. Uh, what's going on uh, with Dreamforce and NerdStalker? Yes, so uh, we have Dreamforce, which is coming up September 15th through 18th in San Francisco at the uh, Moscone Center, I believe, yes. And uh, it's going to be a huge, fantastic event, as usual. Mark Benioff, of course, will be there, oddly enough, uh, or not ironically enough. Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, will be there. <coughs> merger, <coughs> merger, acquisition. Um, <laughs> and then Jessica Alba. The actress will be there. She's the founder of The Honest Company. People are asking why. Goldie Hawn is, will be there, an the actress as well, a founder of the Hawn Foundation. Rick Welt, CEO of the Golden State Warriors and more. Your typical oh, tech leaders will all be there. Uh, George Clooney, CEO of Forrester. Go on and on. Check it out. Go to, as you see here, salesforce.com forward slash dreamforce forward slash DF15 or just go to Google Dreamforce and it'll take you right there. Yeah, well, I have another announcement. The Google team... That is going to be at the EA Global Conference at the Googleplex at uh, July 31st and August 2nd. It's sold out already, but we're, we're going to catch some interviews ourselves. We're actually one of the sponsors, so uh, you might want to catch it online. I believe it'll be streaming it out. And uh, you know, Elon Musk is going to be the uh, headliner of this show, but I'm sure he's under lock and key. I don't know if I could get close enough to get an interview with him, but I'd love to get an interview with Elon to talk about effective altruism, I think is the new CSR in, in mm. corporate life. So um, you know, you're trying to get awareness uh, amongst corporate things uh, of people to try to actually, you know, uh, generate awareness and, 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 and helping, helping uh, type of style in, in the workplace as well as outside your workplace. It's all interconnected, they say. So, um, you know, catch that. Uh, and I think J pop summits coming up. Uh, our team uh, is going to actually do some, uh, pieces with, uh, retrenders our, 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 uh, pop partner. And so we'll have Tycho uh, from nerd soccer. We'll have myself, we'll have Mickey from nerd soccer there catching some stories. It, it's at Fort Mason this year and it's a paid event. So it's a little bit different than the previous events. So, uh, you'll have, uh, 
uh, a tech a tech pitch event from uh, Sunbridge Partners. Uh, you're going to be having Sake Summit, uh, and you'll have music galore as they usually do. So anyway, that's uh, I'm out. I'm out. Wonderful. I think Wonderful. Want to get some dinner, right, my my friend? Yeah, I am starving. I want to I'm say thank you, too. everyone, for listening and watching for this week's uh, Nerd Stalker. And uh, Greg, great to see you again. Very good, man. Yeah, and hey, uh, if you like our stuff, uh, give us a like, uh, like our Facebook page, and uh, also uh, tag uh, any posts you want us to do with a new tag called N-R-D-N-A-T-I-O-N, Nerd Nation, my friends, <laughs> Nerd Nation. All so right. anyway, thanks a lot, Adolfo. We'll catch All you right. next week, huh? All right, see you guys. Thanks. <laughs>